This winter found Paul Simon in a London studio cutting an album. But this time he is neither the performer nor the songwriter. He is the producer. The recording comes out this month. The group is South African and the lyrics are mostly Zulu. I think that's nice. Yeah, no, I'm in. I don't think you need to be on that. Okay. There is many, how many? Many, 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 Some people might be perfectly satisfied to keep reproducing the same hits in the same sort of mold for a lifetime. What is it with you? You're not satisfied. It's not about being satisfied. It's about being interested. I don't find it interesting to repeat, like to look for a new, new subject. Otherwise, it's too boring. If you were going for stuff that radio was going to pick up and play on the top 15 hits, Graceland is not it. That's correct. Do you care? Well, I, I care uh, on one level, and on another level, it's, again, it's beside the point, because uh, I'm interested in a certain uh, musical exploration. That's my job, to follow that. You know, when I was a kid, I always used to say, you know, Paul, Paul could do a lot better at school. He doesn't apply himself. He's looking out the window dreaming. I think that that dreaming is partly a, an escape to a place that you can control more, safer, happier, prettier, something more po You make it more positive by escaping. Uh, and I happen to use that escape to earn my living. I'm able to write songs which is what I like to do, and put food on the table and plates. He started writing songs when he was only 15, performing them with his old grade school buddy, Art Garfunkel. Is it fair to characterize your relationship of 30 years as, as complicated as most marriages? It's more, like a, it's more like a sibling relationship than a marriage. It's closer to that kind of friction when there's friction. If you have to work together. You know, we know each other from before the big success. And we relate to each other as we did then. I mean, nobody can be a star. Each one would call the other one immediately. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> I remember you from uh, Forest Hills. <laughs> Don't tell me you must have this or you must have that. I remember, I know you. They were so popular as a team, their reunion concert in 1981 drew a half million people. But the tensions had taken their toll. It had always been Simon who wrote the songs. Garfunkel could only help sing them. We had a lot of hits. Which ones do you like from that time? I like America. I like The Boxer. I like Bridge Over Troubled Water. I didn't like I Am a Rock. And I didn't like The Dangling Conversation. You didn't like that? No. I had to be the defense attorney for, for, uh, for this song. And the composer, I would say, you know, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, he was only 26 years old. He, he was only a couple of years out of college. He was an English major, and he came from Queens, and he hadn't seen that much of the world, and this is what he thought uh, was sophisticated thinking. And what does the prosecutor say? Prosecutor says, you want to plead to a lesser charge? <laughs> fine, that's fine. So we'll take that song out of serious consideration. Yes, please. Thank you. Take it out of serious consideration. Please. What do you think of your collaborations, the songs that you work together? Together with Paul. Hey, that song is a very big song, I'm telling you. Even at South Africa, in South Africa, they love that song very much. Homeless. Homeless. Oh, everybody give me many questions of that song. You see, everybody here in this world is homeless because our home is is in heaven. <laughs> so you're saying it wasn't a narrowly political song? No, no, no. You, you see, all, all the songs, if you like to just put it in a political song, it can go there. The album Simon is producing will be Ladysmith Black Mombasso's own greatest hit. The group already had two dozen records, but none were widely available outside Africa. When Simon recorded Graceland, 
he was criticized for simonizing African music by imposing his own ideas. He was also angrily denounced for exploiting the musicians. Simon says he paid them triple scale and split the royalties on songs written together. The musicians there felt that they were being victimized by, uh, their phrase was a double apartheid. They were living under apartheid at home. Then they tried to get their music out to the international community, and they were being denied access because they were South African. So they were very frustrated. And they saw in me a vehicle uh, to have this music uh, played around the world because, uh, I'm, because I was known. Do you ever worry that working with him could get you in political trouble? No. You see, Paul Simon is not a political man. He's a quiet man, handsome man. He doesn't... There's nothing wrong to him. No. You see, Paul Simon, everybody likes Paul Simon. All over. Because he's a musician, that's all. Do you ever worry about him stealing from you, stealing your ideas? No. Your music? No. No. <laughs> Sharing something with you, would that be yeah. more like it? That's the one. Maybe we can steal something to him, because he's a big star. <laughs> you can steal from him. <laughs> yes, we are coming to, to learn from him. Joseph? Sounds very good. Let's go. Your opportunity, take one. Take one, Joseph. <laughs> one, two, three, four. It is this sound that Paul Simon says inspired what even he calls the best music of his career. But 30 years of hits and misses have left him wary of his own success. This question of success is, uh, is so complex, really, because it goes down to the core of your being, you know, of, your, of who you are and what you think of yourself. Well, what do you think of yourself these days? Well, uh, these days I'm sort of like uh, kind of bullish on myself. <laughs> I'm, I'm up. I'm up on myself. Uh, and a lot of it has to do with uh, Graceland. But I must say that when Hearts and Bones came out and it wasn't, it wasn't a big hit, I felt really bad. And now that I have a record that is a hit, I think, look, don't overreact to the hit and think it's a big deal. And the next time you have one that isn't a hit, don't overreact to that either. It's not a big deal. Just keep going and do the work. And that's the big deal.